What really has impressed me more than anything about these ladies is the fact that they stepped up to the plate. They chose themselves to run. Which you could say is a kind of a conceited thing or whatever, but it is not. Trust me, I think it's a wonderful thing. And it's something that women... <laughs> and it's something that women don't do. Ours? Um, long career, a lot of years working as a journalist. She has covered local government, city government, county government. She knows all the issues, she knows all the players, she knows all the aspects that have to be dealt with. As a journalist, you got to learn to listen to all the different points of view. As a journalist, you have to learn to represent and communicate fairly and accurately all points of view, not just the ones that you agree with. You got to be able to listen to everybody. And she, yeah. Loris Olson, when she first came to Story County, kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> first of all, you know the old uh, reporter in law enforcement, how they always use the class. But I tell you what, over the years I got to know Loris. I uh, know that uh, Loris is a straight shooter. Will give you a square deal. She won't let nothing go under the rug. But I tell you, she treats you fair, and you got to respect a person like that. There you go. Good. Thank you. Um, I look out and I see I know almost everybody here, and so I want to express my gratitude for you being here uh, to support Linda and I. Um, a little bit off of my speech, I do have prepared notes just so we won't, still won't be here at midnight. Um, I could give Herman a run for his money some days, okay? <laughs> so, um, but I do want to thank the Democratic Party for welcoming me in and um, finding validity in in what I offer and for contributing to me and supporting me and making me stronger. Um, and, and I hope that I do well by you. Why did I settle on Story County and why do I want to be a Story County Supervisor? When I came to Ames, when the Des Moines Register brought me to the Ames in 2002 to bring up a new section, I felt at home immediately. As a journalist, I loved it. It was Nirvana. We had an intelligent group of citizens who participated and dealt with issues intellectually. Did not mean that they always went fast when decisions are made, but they were made thoroughly, and it was great. There were progressive projects. Resource recovery plant in Ames. Thank you, Judy. I think you were involved with that, okay? The geothermal heating in the new Justice Center, the administration building, which I believe Jane Halliburton was instrumental in. I saw some values that I valued as a person. I saw robust assistance for others when in need. I saw a deep respect for Iowa's heritage, and I am a native Iowan myself. And I saw a strong concern for Iowa and the world's natural resources. I also saw the potential in Story County, and the longer I covered them as a journalist, the more I saw that people here had an attitude of no matter how good it was, it could always be better. There's, we value innovation here, we value involvement, and we value excellence. We expect it at ISU, we encourage it in our public schools, and we brag about it in our business circles. So we should strive for it in local government. Story County is in transition. One of our Board of Supervisors announced his retirement over a year ago, leading both the rest of the Board of Supervisors and the Democratic Party to make decisions and take actions in preparation. There were discussions started at the county about redistribution of count committee assignments. We held a contested primary for the four-year seat. It was a clean race focused on experience and issues. I won. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's back to 
being raised in Iowa, Helen also not only is a woman, but you're also not supposed to brag, period. Okay, so you know, I'm not to promote your slide. Fate intervened to create the second situation for transition. Supervisor Paul, Paul Tu died unexpectedly uh, in May, just 17 months into his second term. But there is no cause for alarm. The county is well poised for change, and I am well prepared to help lead it. So is Linda. Our financial position is very sound. Out of our $40 million budget, we also have $10 million in the bank to handle cash flow and emergencies. We are administratively sound. There are seasoned department heads for animal control, conservation, environmental health, facilities, human resources, information technology, and secondary roads. Day-to-day -day coordination of the department's administrative needs are no longer overseen directly by the supervisors. They are now overseen by two more experienced former department heads. There is a longtime employee who is in charge of special projects and research and a very talented long-term employee in Lucy Martin's office keeps daily watch over the county budget, generating frequent, clear, and accurate updates to the Board of Supervisors over the county's fiscal affairs. We need leaders. I have 20 years experience covering local governments in three states. I have seen practices that could be tailored to work within our existing county framework to increase communication and public involvement. I've seen the ways technology is integrated and utilized that could increase efficiency and staff satisfaction. And I've seen the difference that it makes when all members elected to the board bring new ideas to the table. And for the last six years, for the most part, there has been one person bringing those ideas to the table, and Story County has made progress. But we pay $70,000 for each one of those supervisors in salary. So for $210,000, I think we should get $210,000 or more worth of ideas. <laughs> Thank you. What, so what would I do? Well, I want to work on affordable housing and housing in general. It's been taking us way too long. We talk and talk. When I came in 2012, we were talking about affordable housing, and it wasn't a new issue then. It's time to do something about it. The county has had a tool to help with this for the last six years. They are the wind farms up in the northeast part of Story County. And there is capacity there, even with everything they've done so far, that we could use about $150,000 to $200,000 a year and put it toward housing. We could seed projects. We could help rehab homes all throughout the county. Yes, we could use that nasty word, tax, incremental financing, to help then grow projects. Um, but that money's there. It's there today. Right now, those wind farms yield $2 million a year in taxes. The supervisors take $1 million of it. They already are dispersing about $500,000 back to the smaller communities. And uh, that's how we ended up with Dakins Lake as a nice project. We bonded and we're paying off the bonds there. And that's what's happening at the ISU Research Park. And I'm telling you, on top of that, there's still money to go ahead and put to housing. So it's number one on my priority list. Number two is transportation, because even if you have affordable housing out in the county, if people can't get into Nevada or get into Ames, what's the point? HERDA has tried, and it, they try the best they can, that's our public transportation system, to move people around the county, but they haven't been able to do it. So one thing I would like to do is I would like to go ahead and look at some kind of private public partnership, possibly something based on Uber, where residents were driving each other around. If any of you know about the senior program RSVP, that's what they do. They use volunteers, but it is possible. I think we could work on that. Let's be innovative, let's be creative. I'd like to tell you it's all my idea, but they're doing it in several cities around the country right now. I'd like to increase the rate that we repair the bridges and the roads. 
And yes, so I'm gonna admit right now that I'm gonna ask you to vote at some point on a 15 cents per thousand evaluation temporary tax to go ahead and fix those 280 bridges. We have, that they are closing a few, but you should see how many bridges in the county have weight limits on them. We need leadership that speaks out. I think I'm known for my continued call for open government and early public involvement. We need leadership that respects the process because when you start to do too much behind the scenes, whether it's legal to do it or not, one day it'll be you and it'll be your project or your need or your issue that gets handled behind the scenes and doesn't come to the forefront until it's a day before a vote. Two years ago, I brought up the issue of gender equity to the board. Um, they were making appointments and not really paying attention to gender equity. They're doing better, they're trying better now. And there's some ongoing issues, water quality and natural resources, rural versus urban expectation, wants and needs. And we need to speak up and speak out for those. Um, there are going to be some likely issues coming forward. The ISU Research Park, I'm going to talk about it forums more. Um, I'm just going to jump over that. You can ask me later about it. It is in some ways the best project that we've had from a collaborative effort and it's going to give us new trails. But in some ways the way that two years that uh, planning went on behind the scenes but not really secretly, you just had to really be paying attention, um, leads us to begin about to wonder about how are we going to use monies in the future. And there is the upcoming um, issue we have of filling the appointment for county attorney position that is going to be vacated by Stephen Holmes. On Tuesday, I got up and asked the Board of Supervisors to remember that there were really three options. There is an option of a special election. There is the option to appoint but they don't have to appoint a permanent person. They can appoint someone who would promise not to run in 2018, therefore not giving the gift of incumbency to whoever the appoint appointee is. If they appoint, it will be the fourth time in six years that Story County will have filled an elected position by an appointment of only three people. I'm waiting to get more information. I'm waiting that discussion is September 13th. If any of you have time to go visit at 10 a.m. on Tuesday when we at the board uh, office in or at the board meeting over in Story County. There's going to be a, no, another issue I'm going to be bringing up, and that will be mi uh, raising the min minimum wage in Story County. Discussion. Thank you. Discussions have already begun and, and some research has already begun. And um, uh, I know that we want to make sure everyone is being allowed to come to that table for that discussion. The chair of the Board of Supervisors has already talked to the Ames Chamber and Ames Economic Development Commission and asked for them to start assembling information. I would like to see us also having other groups who are interested, like Amos, maybe CCI, um, the university, also providing information, okay? And I'll leave it at that for now. We also need to mentor the next generation. So, I end by letting you know that this run, this time, is very different than my two previous ones, and I thank you all for it. The Democratic Party has asked of me, I hope I've delivered, but they have energized me. Um, they have energized me like I have not felt in my previous runs. So I started this. Thank you for your support tonight. I'm going to end by saying thank you for your support, and I'm going to need more. <laughs> so, so this is the sucking up here. So. But um, I want to remind you that I have on my website, and my, kind of my campaign theme is Together We Can. It's time. Together We Can. Let's get new leadership. Thank you.